second to go right now and Viviani's got the ultimate lead out. No sign of Ethan Hayter. It's going to be Viviani who is the choice here. Lund on his backside and indeed there as well as you can see. In fact that's Pavel Bittner, I beg your pardon by the looks of things. What's Christoph got here? They come around this roundabout. Christoph just opens his, opens his mouth. Now going to open his legs here, but Viviani's got for this. He's got the release. It's 150 metres, 50 to go. Here comes everybody else. Viviani, will he hold on? Not on the throw. Who's going to get there? Oh, Viviani just holds on by the look of things. But it's going to go to the photo. Now, where is Christoph? You haven't seen him revealed to us just yet, but he's in the mosh, I can tell you. And there's a few wheels as well that are being followed here. Campbell Stewart's uh, now isolated from his teammates. He's staying on the back wheel here of uh, Alexander Christoph in the blue jersey. Lining up through the front centre goes Mohoric, likes a ramp. And it may well be that he owns this one. And he's looking very handy for this. Oh, he most certainly is. Big lead out coming up as well for Alouar. Uh, that is Light Tower, I think, that's uh, lighting it up. Alouar on his back. And he's going to take it himself by the looks of things. Is Cairo Rao going to come through here? Viviani's going to try and nick it in the very last. Oh, what a surprise at the very last here. Yuri Leitao, all as Alouar thought was the chosen man, but Leitao does a job. That was brilliant. Another one of these big turns. Now, can they make it stick? That's the big question. Now, it's all about how you deliver it from now on. It's a big drag race all the way to the line. And the position is Tobias Lund, who is going to get there, and it looks like uh, Lund has got a good lead out here. And it's Parasini that's gone for it very, very early. He's on the barriers there. Lund coming up the inside. Oh, what a surprise! Q365 getting the queue behind him. Here comes Mohoric trying to rejoin the party, but has he left it too late? There's uh, 150 metres to go only right now. Sheffield still grinding it. Mohoric coming up and over the top. Adria wants to be part of the day as well. He's getting some uh, some drive here. Our last just about run out of steam by the looks of things. Sheffield's on the back wheel of uh, Mohoric with Adria there. Aulaar, I can't, don't think can, can get any more out of it. Has Sheffield got anything left? Not got the explosivity just at the time. Oh, and out the line. Christoph's got to be tempted to go for it right now. He must not be mugged by Aula, who comes in on his uh, on his back wheel. Others coming to join the, the fray as well. Tipped on Thunberg. Here comes Parsini up the centre of the road. Oh, and the blue jersey of Tobias Lund is also in, in the frame here. Who's going to have it? Aula hits the front. Oh, this is amazing. Will he possibly get there after such a long wait? On the throw, he takes it. Christoph is going to try and get a stage win out of here and Aulau knows this, wants to stay with him. Aulau wrestling with it, as you can see in the red jersey, Christoph is about to be released. His uh, uh, aero helmet is absolutely where it needs to be. Uh, Parasini and we've got a crash and it's the red jersey, he's gone down. That's Aulau I'm afraid and so it's up for grabs uh, out front with bonus seconds, he'll get the same finish but bonuses could count for an awful lot. Oh and here we are. race of 2023 is in Italy. It's in Bergamo. He's won here before. He wins again. He coasts home. He grins from ear to ear. He's a rider like no other we have seen in the modern era. He is a grand champion and he is the winner of Lombardy for the third time in a row. Tade Pogaccia takes another bow in his ridiculous career. Certain riders as well, as we look at, uh, at the start, we've got five, five stars, unsurprisingly, for the gadget. We've got the four stars there for Adam Yates and the rest. And 
And we got our first look at Julian Alaphilippe through the center as Jan Tratnik is there as well, the former Slovenian champion, looking after his teammate Primoz Roglic, who, by the way, is racing his first one-day race of the season. However, he is a two-time winner of this event. The climb's not the longest in the world, but it's one of the hardest out there. 2.1 kilometers, average of 10%, maximum of 18%, and this, as far as natural stadia go, is one of the most special around. Rafael Micah continues to work behind and UAE have good numbers. Quick sighting of Chavez, the former winner there. Roglic, the former two-time winner, sits on the wheel of his compatriot Tadej Pogacar, who last year finished second here to Embrik Mas. Back of the line, the Slovenian champion Tadej Pogacar. Two Slovenians on his wheel, Primoz Roglic and Jan Trak. Two laps to go, and they're almost on him. Led yeah. by the man who won this race 10 years ago, Diego Alisi. There's a quick chat between Adam Yates and Tadej Pogacar in the final kilometer of that climb there. There's some serious damage done to the peloton. I'm looking at Ciccone, who's at the front. Vlasov, a former winner. Carapaz is still in there. We've seen Sivakov as well, with Roglic, Pogacar, and Rigmas too. This is the front of the race then. No more than 15 to 20 riders. Tishpanota, as Matt was saying, on the back. Zana is still in there alongside Simon Yates. Ben O'Connor sits in fourth wheel. And it's Adam Yates now, ahead of Ilan von Wilder. And the plan is all then for Pogacar now. Left-hand side in the green. Former winner Vlasov is there, ready and waiting. Roglic remains. Ciccone looks down and looks tired, but he's hanging on. Grits his teeth. Woods, that man you mentioned, still there for Israel Premier Tech. And Simon Yates in the blue and white too. But it's his brother who's putting down the power, who is inflicting the pain. And there are 10 kilometers to go as Benoit hangs on for dear life at the back here. I don't think anybody looks particularly comfortable here. Everybody's suffering, trying to hold on to the wheels as they winch themselves towards the top of this climb. Conversation on the radio between the two riders you just mentioned, Adam Yates and Tadej Pogacar, shoring up the final plan. And here is Yates at the front with three kilometers to go to execute it. They're less than a kilometer now from entering the climb for the final time. We'll go through the arch and Pogacar moves up. So two kilometers to go. Let the games begin, Matt Stevens. It's Vlasov who makes the first move, and this could be interesting tactically because Adam Yates might have to use the final bit of power that's in his legs to make sure he closes it. He does it with relative ease, in fact. Roglic yeah. is moving on one side as well, and Pogacar continues to sit smack bang in the middle of the group. It's Michael Woods on the left as we look at it now. Pogacar to Adam Yates is done. Chikorne starts to struggle. Who can hang on? Who can go? It's Pogacar powering up this into the final kilometer now. Carapaz is there. Roglic remains. Woods drifts, but he's still in the game. 900 meters to go. And look at Pogacar power away. It's Pogacar. Carapaz, Roglic, and Mass is the next man who's just struggling. Daylight opens up. It's three plus one, Matt, and 700 meters now to the finish line.
Roglic getting ready to roglify it if he can and now he goes Roglic on the right hand side and the yellow hits the front and it's always hard to bring him back he's stolen a march on his compatriot Pogacar and it's opening up Roglic motoring around the corner here the finish line now is almost in sight Roglic opening up and it doesn't look like anybody can compete with him Primoz Roglic around the corner almost five hours of racing and Rogler might be moving on but he ain't going anywhere Roglic coming to the line hands in the air it's first one day race of the year he closes down Roglic follows Carapaz is there it's Mass 2 it's Zana Balde as well all of the main actors are now on your screen and Tadej Pogacar wants the leading role again Could be interesting. O'Connor knows that this is a dangerous man too and decides to attack across the gap. Biggest names are waiting behind. They're playing a game, but it could be a dangerous game this one because Ilofon Wilder is gifted that he is. He's not a Roglic yet. He's not a Pogacar. He isn't a Mass. He's not a Carapaz, the Olympic champ. step forget the fusion this is what they do best if they are to disappear remember this what a team what a history one day racing classics it's what they're all about and it's the new man they put on the scene who's done it the first belgian since eddie merckx to win trevalli varesini It is quite predictably Jombo Visma chasing behind him. And in Wout van Aert. Wout van Aert, you have to say, is a favourite. He can go over these climbs, he can sprint very well. What are the other, the other teams going to do? And when you look at through the, who started, some teams have come here with sprinters, but some teams haven't. So the teams that haven't got sprinters have to make this a, a, as difficult as possible. But for the moment, anyway, uh, Jombo Visma are just happy to set this uh, tempo at the front with Sam Oman. Put that on pause because this is Dries Devenheins really up in the pace. Tratnik trying to follow. A couple of riders in there for Alpacinda Koenig. And if Devenheins is around, Ala Philippe will follow. This is the opportunity to try and test himself for tomorrow. He's just sitting now on the wheel of Mauro Schmidt. And it is now Mauro Schmidt who takes over from Dries Devenheins. Jan Tratnik on his wheel, Ala Philippe there, but crucially, just a few wheels back. Very comfortable, looking good. It's Wild Van Aert. First hairpin then, Piccolo Stelvio for the seventh and final time at this year's Coppa Bernocchi, the 104th edition of the race in Lombardy. Keep your eye on Julien Alaphilippe, his team working. They need to make it hard for Wad Van Aert. Alaphilippe on the left-hand side, moving in front of Van Aert now, onto the wheel of Marlo Schmidt. Van Aert who had his teammate, Tish Benut, on the radio. His other teammate, Jan Tratnik, is controlling the pace here. Gap developing about three quarters way down near the front. It has to be closed behind by Bajoli. Final proper climb in this race. There's a couple of lumps and bumps on the way in. And all the while, Wadfanat sits there 
Oops. And Afedi pulling out, looking around, trying to sit back in. some organization it's not fully organized as you might expect I'll tell you there that Vincenzo Albanese is in the group and Christian Scaroni Albanese of course a fastest finisher and this is where tactically it gets interesting and Jombo Visma want to make it even a smaller group and what was Jan Tratnik just letting the wheel go there Brian Smith Finally, there's a little bit more organisation in this front group now, Brian, and the gap's grown to 19 seconds. The gap's come down to 13 seconds. Keep your eye on it as we go up the hill here, because we can see that in that second group there are riders who think that if they make the effort now, they can get across. That's the thing, Rob. Um, if you do make that huge effort, you're going to split this group behind. I think it's strength in numbers. If you are going to come across, you don't attack and, and come across in this group. You, you actually try and kind of ride with, with others. Everybody else in that group has got is Walt Van Aert, and he's got two teammates there. And the two teammates can ride the last 20 odd kilometres on the front and keep this group together. Almost call it. And there we go, once we get to 40 seconds, Brian, the gap is big enough to get at least the neutral service car in. It's all about Wat van Aert for them though today, we think. Die Spenot who won Kurna is in the middle there. Rangy figure in the yellow jersey. And Jan Tratnik here at the front, who's pulled up absolute blinder today. He's raced really well. And given the bad luck, well, the shocking luck he's had this season, it's very, very nice to see him riding so well. Five kilometers to go. Nine riders in the front, including Wat van Aert, Julien Alaphilippe and a few others. Let the games begin here. Could get tactical, but you have to say the van Aert, on paper at least, has to be the favorite. Everybody racing for their current teams. Everybody racing for their own opportunity at a big, big chance awaits. There's a chat there between the two Belgians. For Nott and Van Aert, the final plan is coming together, Brian. Right, here we go, behind the motorbike, chance to go. That's something that developed and an opportunity to attack and of course Julien Alaphilippe is going to take that opportunity. That's his style, that's how he races. That might not happen, but he will go down trying. Around the corner, final couple of hundred metres, and it's about to be launched, and it is launched. It's Wat van Aert at the front on his wheel and trying to get around. You can see Albanese behind, it's Bajoli here though on the right hand side, and the white comes here, she. On the left, it's Albanese, but nobody at all can compete with Wat van Aert. It's business as usual for Jumbo Visma, despite all the talk off the bike. meters to go, Jasper Philipson launches, he's got uh, Case Ball right behind him, it's going to be tough to hold him off, but will Jasper Philipson be able to deliver another victory, remarkable success. 
Tillotson gets onto the wheel. He's uh, in arrears at the moment. It's going to be a drag race to the line. And I think Astana are going to make this one. Oh, but Philipson's on his case. He's coming up into the wheel. Now is he going to get round and break the heart? Here it is. Line just approaching now. Oh, Philipson just steals it at the very last. He's absolutely shattered. If he's shattered, how's everyone else? This has been a monster of a day in the Tour of Turkey, and its victory is going to go to Alexey Lenzenko of Kazakhstan and the Astana squad. He has climbed to the sky. He's climbed like a mountain goat, and he's got a hard-won victory. meters remaining they duck out of the slipstream and we pick up the lines case ball owns it on the one side of the road but Iona Kometa with an already trying to get there in time but it looks like there's a good get there and I think he's just about made it remarkable stuff yes for Philipson gets the victory meters to go, Matt Wall's in prime position here to deliver for the Bora Hansgrohe squad. Inside 300 meters to go, Denz owns it for the Bora Hansgrohe the team. is going to lead it out, lead it out. Matt Wall's ready for a comeback victory here. Is there anyone going to be able to get on terms? Matt Wall's inside 100 meters to go. Comes off the wind, he's waiting for time. This one, Denz's going to hold it. What about that? meters to go, Lionotti goes for glory, here comes Alexi Lutsenko, wants another victory on the mountain, Alexi Lutsenko, the overall race leader, is going to cover pass in his position at the top, but he's not going to get there in time, Lagnolotti has the strength and the glory, and it is Lagnolotti that gets it for Borgos VH. Mines decided to go attacking, he wants to pin this one out, an interesting approach, he's got the mountain's classification, he might have a half an eye on weather, I really on uh, stage honours today. Just coming to the haunted section, allows himself a look back. Oh, that can be a dangerous thing indeed at a moment such as this. Don't think uh, Philipson's in that uh, front group either. Let's wait and see. That looks like uh, Lutsenko's kicking on, maybe for Switzer. Do they believe they can get there? 400 metres, I think he's going to make it. This is absolutely remarkable. That's a uh, case ball that is, uh, that is in the frame here, being driven on by Lutsenko himself. 300 to go, and Jay Bynes going to bring it home. 200 to go. Oh, he's now thinking about celebrating, and we will do so with him as well. Jay Vine making amends, absolutely brilliant for that uh, disappointment in Babadag. And he just eases home and says, thank you very much. Closing moments of this stage, it's Jasper Philipson that's going to get on the pedals first and go for glory. Will Case Ball be able to come around him? He's got to go again and again and again because they're not going to give it to him, but it is going to be a fourth victory of the week. Remarkable stuff, it's Jasper Philipson delivers.